for those real quickly who've never heard the word technology stack, because actually it's fairly new to me, break down what a technology stack is for someone who may never have heard that term before. I mean, it's it's kind of just a fancy buzzword to describe like, you know, you've got the set of technology you use in your business that you maybe you connect all your technology together. Uh, maybe you want data transfer between them. Um, the set of technology you and your employees use to accomplish your business result or your end product. So maybe even a little for those who are just learning it for the first time, picture a couple different apps or a couple different softwares talking to each other at once to achieve a common goal. Yeah. Like feed our media team. They might use like Facebook, Asana, Google analytics, Slack. Slack. You know, you know, you've got interpersonal, you know, intercompany communications, Slack and Google and uh, Google Suite, you, Zoom. You've got, um, you know, what you use for operations, which for us, it's like Breezeway, you know, for managing maintenance tasks and cleaning tasks. Um, we've got Guesty, which helps, you know, is a PMS that aggregates out to all the different channels we're on. So it's, you know, it's what type of technology are you using within your business? And then, you know we're taking it as far as, Hey, we've got technology, but it doesn't solve all of our problems. Right. So now we have to, and the, the technology doesn't exist out in the market to solve all of our problems. So we have to extend the tech stack. So we have to start building applications on top of that existing tech stack to accomplish our result. Um, but yeah, I mean, what, what, about, are, for, go ahead. what about for somebody that maybe has, maybe they're just managing one or two, maybe even three STRs. Is this something they should even consider or, even looking at a tech stack at this point? Yeah, I mean, I think they should be looking at what what can they use technology-wise to make their job easier as a an Airbnb, an Airbnb owner. Um, you know, they don't have to go as deep as we do because, you know, we're managing, we're approaching 200 homes in our management and uh, it, our problems are still bigger, right? So we have to have better technology to solve those problems. You know, I think you can also look at it too. There's more there's some apps out there that'll help people do one home, two home, three homes. I feel like that threshold is like three to five homes. So there's some apps out there that are doing it. And you might be able to look at those as inside those apps, there's a bunch of little technologies trying to do a common goal. So some people are out there leveraging your more retail style tech stacks, if you will. Maybe they're, uh, what's, there's a little app out there like make B and B clean. You can find cleaners, um, and that might be talking to uh, their Airbnb account. So right there, they kind of they're, they've started out building a tech stack. But when you go, like Evan was saying, to 200 homes, you're looking at a, a significantly more commercial oriented tech stack to handle all these processes from the dynamic pricing, talking to the 50 different calendars that are out there on the internet, which is then kicking that back to our accounting team, which is then being handled and communicated with our owner account management team and our guest communications team. And at almost at each one of those little nodes is a whole new software that's talking to a different software. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I'd say if you're like one to five Airbnbs, um, you know, you just need to have the basics. You need to have a way of probably getting, you know, your reservation accounting data into an accounting system so you can accurately, rec you know, accurately know what you're making on your units. Otherwise, you're going to be doing that all by hand or by spreadsheets. Um, so basically, you know, maybe find a small PMS that's not too expensive for five units. And hopefully that PMS either has its own accounting system built in or has a connection to accounting system like QuickBooks. Um, what, what else would a, a small, let's say like a one to 10 unit, either they're managing their own units or it's a small property management company. Where, where do you think they should start? Feel like yeah. One to 10. I mean, I'm, I'm just trying to think back when we were at that point too. And it may have been, I think the, the most difficult thing at that time was managing probably the cleaning operations, scheduling and managing that, um, and then if you're on multiple platforms, coordinating those calendars, those inboxes together. Um, that was probably the most difficult part at that point, one to one to 10. I mean, one, if you just have one and it's on Airbnb, Evan, like you said, that like tech stack's just a buzzword. We all have tech stacks on our, in our personal lives on our phone. We're using Google Calendar. We're using, it's, it's not that crazy. So it's just taking, um, yeah, it's just leveraging more technology 
to automate things and make things easier in your own life. So what was some of the man yeah, some of the manual task things. How about manual locks? data entry we were doing? How about lock locks? I yeah. Locks I, I I don't think we ever really went to uh use just keys or lock boxes. I think we went straight to even from the very beginning, we went straight to um to auto locks, to the, the keypad auto locks. And I think we used the software at the very beginning as well. I don't remember what software, but yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll kind of go into like, why do we use tech stacks um, a little bit more too? And I think there's like two results here we're trying to accomplish. It's either automating, so ma improving internal processes. So, you know, we use the lock system like Philip was saying. We use that to automate so we don't have to go in there and change codes manually.